During the early part of World War II, from airfields in England and North Africa, Allied bombing raids were launched that were the only method of striking back at Nazi-held Europe. By 1943, the U.S. had stationed sufficient planes in England to begin attacking Germany in earnest. The bomber crews were allowed to rotate home after completing 25 missions. That was the magic number, 25. These color movies, directed by Hollywood legend William Wyler, tell the story of one particular bombing crew attempting to complete its 25th mission. If the men of the Memphis Bell could make it safely back to England, they could make it home to America. And this is the crew of the Memphis Bell, 324th Squadron, 91st Heavy Bombardment Group. Just one plane and one crew in one squadron, in one group of one wing of one Air Force out of 15 United States Army Air Forces. Stay on the ball, gang, and she'll bring us back like she's always done. Okay? Let's go. Allied planes would drop more than one and a half million tons of bombs on Germany. But the attacks came at a heavy price. The crews knew that 6% of the bombers from any one mission were not expected to make it back. And they were well aware that losses of up to 25% were not uncommon. On the nose of each plane, the personality of the flight crew could be plainly seen. To the crews, these were more than just machines. They were a link to better times and, after 25 trips, a ticket home. As the planes took off, the men knew they would face an onslaught of heavy flak and deadly German fighter pilots before completing their mission and returning to England. It takes all of a pilot's strength to keep a 30-ton fortress in tight formation. But the formation is the bomber's best defense against enemy fighters. At 13.30 hours, shortly after takeoff, six groups of planes will be heading toward the enemy coast from six directions. The Blue Force, 100 B-24 Liberator four-engine bombers. The White Force, 300 B-17 Flying Fortresses. The Green Force, 300 B-17s with an escort of six squadrons of P-47 Thunderbolts. A force of B-26 Marauders, twin-engine medium bombers with six squadrons of RAF Spitfires escorting. Almost a thousand planes in the air. The enemy coast. From up here, it looks the same as any other. Houses, roads, green fields, factories, waterways. The first flak, just harmless looking, silent puffs of smoke. Only each puff is a shell exploding, throwing shrapnel around the sky. Pilot to Bombardier. Okay, Vin, you've got it. Now Evans flies the Memphis Bell, controlling it through the bombsite. And now we are most vulnerable. Committed to our bombing run, we can't dodge flak or fighters. Here's the first. Top turret fires at him. Evans must ignore the battle. Crosshairs lined up on target. Adjustments for wind drift made. Bombs away.
half of the mission is over, the easy half. Now to get home. Fighters at six o'clock. This is what a gunner sees, a speck in the sky. That's a fighter, and then a blink. That means he's firing at you, 2,300 rounds a minute. In a running battle, one of the most important instruments is the interphone. As the bombers came back, everyone at the airfield tried to spot the planes carrying their buddies. From every window, anxious eyes scanned the sky, but the Memphis Bell was nowhere in sight. One by one, the bombers lumbered in, finding their assigned spots on the landing fields. The wounded were cared for first. Then the dead. Bomber casualty rates were higher than those of any other U.S. combat force until late in the war. The planes continued to struggle in, tails shattered. Fuselages riddled with German bullets canopies destroyed. But with crews of smiling men happy to have cheated death one more time, but none from the Memphis Bell. The wheels of the Memphis Bell come back to the soil of England for the 25th time. The men of the Memphis Bell had beaten the odds and returned safely from their 25th mission. So many crews were less fortunate. In 1943, you only had a one in three chance of completing your tour. Allied airmen suffered more than 50,000 casualties by war's end, and thousands more were shot down, becoming POWs. But they dismantled the German war machine destroying factories, oil supplies, and communication centers. Without the pounding of the Allied air offensive, the invasion of Europe, D-Day, would never have been possible. <laughs> 